All righty. CJ Wom, welcome to the show. How did I do on your name? You did great. You, some people want to say Wham, but you have to put an exclamation point at the end. <laughs> okay. Wom. Well, now, I have a friend, one of my best friends. His name's Bruce Wham, W-H-A-M, but it's Wom. Yes, it is Wom. Yep. Got it right. Nice job. Cool. Well, I want to give you an opportunity to talk to us about Ferris mowers. So tell yeah. us a little, give us a little elevator pitch about Ferris. I was just telling you off air, my buddy Greg Chisholm, he, he's uh, kind of made Ferris famous in our little YouTube community, but, but go ahead and tell us about Ferris mowers. Yeah. So Ferris mowers actually is kind of a unique item out there in the world of contracting, landscaping. The thing that I love about Ferris is that we actually have a really unique four point independent suspension system. And that just means, you know, you can mow faster, you can still get that quality of cut. You know, when you're out there getting kind of beat up all day, at the end of the day, you feel pretty good. So we kind of try to say work hard, feel good. But it's really just all about that suspension, which was actually kind of interesting. It was designed by Todd Gordon, who's NASCAR crew chief. He's retired now, but he has a lot of roots in the NASCAR world and um, knows a thing or two about suspension. So really working with really bright, innovative people like Todd who are able to bring that technology to lawn mowing. And it's kind of like a, how is nobody else there, right? Like you drive cars on paved roads every day and you wouldn't imagine doing that without suspension, but then you're gonna get on all this rough terrain mowing you know, grass all day and, and you do it without suspension. So it's kind of one of those moments where it's like, man, how are we kind of one of the only people out there with, with that technology? So. Um, that's one of the things I love about it. We are owned by Briggs & Stratton, so uh, we have a lot of really cool innovation on our product on the engine side. So we offer a lot of product with the 500-hour oil guard, which, again, helps you know keeping guys out working and not doing maintenance. So we love that, that partnership, too, and a lot of the innovation that we get from being a part of that bigger family that's really focused on, on engines that a lot of our competitors choose as well. So... And then when did you get connected with Ferris and, and the lawn care industry? So I've been at Briggs & Stratton for almost nine years, but I've been on the turf side for four. So it's uh, a little bit newer for me, but I've always kind of been in the industry of guys who make a living using our equipment. So it's kind of fun for me to to be doing that now. Okay. Yeah, we, we love lawnmowers. So I didn't know if you kind of got in on marketing, if you've kind of over the years, like, oh, this is actually pretty cool or, or how, how that all works. Yeah, well, it's it's funny because I'm actually from Arizona and we don't have much grass out there. Oh, wow. um, but now I'm like the crazy lady who's like worrying about my stripes and figuring out what kind of stripe kit that I need and all the guys that I follow in the industry and try to learn from them. And a lot of the influencers that I work with, I learn so much from them. And I always take a step back after I do my own lawn and wonder if these guys would be proud of me or embarrassed by me. <laughs> yeah, so, I got you. What state are you, is your lawn in? So I'm in Wisconsin. So we're okay. just north of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So we only get about half of the year to take care of our lawns. But when we do, we get pretty passionate about it. Yeah, because you guys have cool season turf up there. So in my opinion, you can really lay down some nice stripes because I live down in Georgia and our grass is Bermuda or Zoysia, which is warm season grass. And it's so hard to stripe. And so I see some of y'all up north with these phenomenal stripes. And it's like you're, you have a huge advantage because you cut it tall and down here we cut it short. Who do you like to watch on YouTube or like influencers that, that you kind of like, oh, that that's inspiring? There's a ton. It's, it's actually interesting through this world of social media. And when you get into this industry, who starts following you and you follow them back. I, I love Alan Hain. He just does so much to teach me about maintenance as far as like the lawn care itself and taking care of that. And he's actually one of those guys that can stripe that Florida grass. So that's always pretty impressive. And then there's some guys that like Richie Plemons that I like, Stripe Life. I, I love following Stripe Life. Um, Kevin's really great and just seeing all the content that gets up there and the engagement and learning about all the different tips and tricks and tools that those guys do um, is really interesting. Richie Plemons is great. So. Now, Richie's down here in Georgia. What, what's his story? Because he was doing lawn care. Then I saw him out driving a semi truck. Now I see him out making lawn care again. Do you, do you know his whereabouts these days? He, he had to take a little bit of a hiatus. Um, it was for family needs. You know, he's just such a great guy and families first. So he did take a little bit of time off from content, but he's back. Uh, yeah, he's definitely 
going to be building up his his business again and and being in front of the camera again. So happy to see him back on social media for sure. Yeah, that's cool. And Alan Hayne, the lawn care nut, man, he's he's cool. I got to hang out with him several times down in Florida and he's like rolling, rolling around in his front yard. And uh, <laughs> Could you he, imagine living across the street from him and wondering what he's up to? <laughs> yeah, well, his old neighbor, he's living in Indiana and this little kid lived next door named Jake Sullivan. And so little kid Jake would look out the window and be like, dad, why is, why is Alan rolling around in the front yard again? And, and, uh, long story short, you know, Jake and Alan were neighbors and got to be friends and, and, uh, you know, Alan moved to Florida and now his neighbors down there are like, you know, what, what are you doing, man? Yeah. It was Jake, a nice neighborhood. Great. Too. Jake does a really yeah. great job too. His cinematography is spot on. I mean, if he doesn't continue in the landscaping business, I think that Jake has a really big future in some film production and cinematography. He does a fantastic job as well. Yeah. These young kids, man, I was interviewing Jake and I'm like, you know, teach me how to do Instagram. My, my little brother just graduated college. And so I'm constantly calling him like, you know, what, what time do I post on Instagram? Like how, what, how do I do TikTok? Like the, these kids, they, they just know these algorithms and social media. It, it, it's so impressive. Yeah. I asked Jake, when are you going to be Jake the lawn man? He said, no, I'm always going to be a kid. So. Yeah. I don't know if they thought this through my, I don't know if you know, Naylor Tally Fair to lawn care rookie, but he like branded himself as a lawn care rookie. I'm like, bro, you're in year seven. You're not the rookie. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to come up with a su succession plan for them as they grow in their careers. But yeah, Jake said he's always going to be a kid. So totally. So you you got you started out at Briggs and Stratton. And when did Briggs and Stratton buy Ferris again? Can you can you walk us like just explain it to everyone because there's so much. I've just heard so many things. Just tell us how that whole progression went down. Yeah. So you got to go a little bit deeper than that. So Briggs and Stratton also owns Snapper and Simplicity in addition to Ferris. So I would say in the 19 late 1990s, Simplicity actually decided that they wanted to get into suspension and they had acquired Ferris and even just just around that time too, in the early 2000s, um, Snapper had acquired Simplicity. So it was this culmination of Snapper acquired Simplicity, Simplicity acquiring Ferris. And then um, in 2004, I believe it was, and I could be totally misquoting this, um, shame on me, is when Briggs and Stratton had looked to acquire that whole group of business. So that's when they took over Snapper, Simplicity, and Ferris. So it's been quite a long time. And it's interesting because all three brands, you know, Snapper always had a really big national presence, national branding. I think everybody knows and loves the rear engine rider that Snapper's uh, famous for and the high back push mower. Simplicity and Ferris are truly like niche regional, only known in specific regions. But when you're in those regions, that's kind of the only brand that you know. So from a marketing perspective, my job day in and day out is a little bit of a challenge because you have these fantastic, high quality, premium products that, you know, how do you get more and more people aware of these brands and engage with the brands? So that's kind of things that keep me up every night is, you know, how do you tell somebody about a product that's so fantastic? And it's one of those, you know, Ferris, the second you get on it, you sit on it, you ride it, you never want to get on another product. So that's the challenge too, is how do you get more people to, to demo and test out a Ferris? Um, so we actually have a crew of guys out there that just go around, tow equipment, They'll pull up to landscapers at gas stations and try to get them, you know, hey, let's go to your next job with you, test out the equipment just to really get them on it to experience that difference with the Ferris brand. So, yeah, so Briggs and Stratton was really fortunate to kind of make this acquisition in the early 2000s that had all three brands, all three really great brands. Um, that's been really fun to work on for me because working with whether it's the dealer partner or the landscaper, I feel like day in and day out, I'm working with small businesses and helping small business businesses succeed and achieve great things. So that's kind of fun for me on a daily basis, for sure. So I'm not the only one staying up at night thinking about marketing, huh? No, no. <laughs> It keeps me up for sure. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, uh, this is old school, but a guy named Dan Kennedy, he writes sales copy and things uh, like that. It sounds super familiar. Okay. He's this old guy. Has He has a mustache and he he teaches you like back in the day 
when infomercials were popular, he was responsible for like a lot of the infomercials that would come on TV okay. or whatever. But long story, sto long story short, I've been binge watching his old school YouTube videos talking about marketing. This is like before the internet ever came out. Um, but I just, I eat, breathe, love marketing. Um, you know, I started a lawn care business in 2011, marketing that, and then started this podcast marketing that. And so literally I'm up at night, like listening to stuff about marketing. So I, I'm not the only one. Yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> just when you think you're creative and on top of something, some, some new technology or some new method comes out that you got to learn about and it's yeah. fresh every day. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was in college, Facebook came out. I literally remember like I was in college. No, it wasn't in high school. No one was on Facebook. And it was like, oh, the cool kids are on Facebook. No, the nerds are on Facebook. It was like, oh, everyone's on Facebook. You know, I can remember that coming out and then Instagram coming out and then something called Snapchat. My little brother's like, you're not on Snapchat. I'm like, Snap, Snap what? <laughs> Snapchat came out and then Musical.ly, which is now TikTok. And, and then, you know, Instagram steals everything, Instagram reels. And it's like, to, to stay on top of all of this, it's it's wild. And YouTube, you know, now YouTube shorts. And so how has that gone in, in your career, you know, over these years? How, how have you kind of seen people's attention shift and, and how do you adapt to all of that? Yeah, so it's uh, that's a constant learning curve. And I have been so fortunate to have um, people on my team who come in and they're just willing to try new stuff. So they'll come in and they'll just start, you know, they'll build an account, they'll start putting content up. And we just, we see how, how do people engage? How do people interact? But the thing it, that could literally be somebody's full-time job. And so I give you guys so much credit because when you're trying to post content to YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and, and always like outsmart the algorithms and make sure that you're still getting the views and the likes and the engagement. It's this constant puzzle. So I've been just really fortunate to have team members who are very forward thinking and they always want to try new things. Candidly for me as a, as a manager responsible for the team, it's kind of hard to say, okay, I'm the old lady and I don't get it, but you go and you do it. You know, I don't always understand what they're doing, but I'm following along and they bring me along on that journey with them. But I think I think as a at Briggs and Stratton, when you're a part of a big corporation, we move like turning the Titanic, right? So, you know, we have these brand standards and it has to go through six levels of review and approval. And, you know, we got to make sure we're not putting something out that might get us in trouble. And that is not helpful when you're in this world of now, 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 social media content, engaging stuff. So that, that hurts us quite a bit. And so we have to kind of just say, you know, we're going to be a little bit risky and we're going to put stuff up that doesn't get approval because we need to be out there, which was really hard to get these big corporations behind, you know, just being able to make content and put it out there without three months of review and approval process. Yeah. Three months is like an eternity. The trends like yeah. how to play certain songs and like three months from now, <laughs> it's like, bro, like what in the world? Yeah. And it's like, there's just certain, you know, even just like music that you put with it, right? Like, uh -huh. you got to just say, hey, this is what's popular right now. It might have a swear word in it, but we got to do what what's best for the audiences and not, you know, always within guardrails, right? But you got to just kind of figure out how you navigate that new space all the time. Because at one point, Right. You were talking about when Facebook came out, MySpace was like, the oh, man. <laughs> I'm MySpace. so how do you what oh. is Facebook, the new MySpace and what's the new Facebook? Right. So how do you stay on top of that? But, you know, also juggling the types of content for each platform is marginally different. So, yeah, it's, it's a wild world. Yeah. MySpace. I forgot all about that. man. <laughs> well, well, my show my age you know i grew up in L or, uh, middle school we had aol instant messenger like that was the first breakthrough mm -hmm. where it's gone since then but like you said you have to be and i can't even imagine all the slow moving layers of approval and you know i call the shots it's, it ends with me so it's like hey let's 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 do it yeah but i think it's so important that we have to be opportunistic there's a guy i don't know if you know his, his story al blades he's i'm not familiar okay so he he had a lawn care business. Thing was called like GM Lawn Care down in Florida. He was making YouTube videos, and he was getting like a hundred views, hundred and fifteen views, and just they weren't getting that many views. 
this was last May. Then he he put out like a rap song, just like funny, like about cutting grass. This is like a comedy little show. And it got 10,000 views and he eventually got 1,000 YouTube subscribers. He's like, wow, 1,000 YouTube subscribers. That was last May, CJ. Now he has over 620,000 YouTube subscribers. I think he has like 70 million views. And if he doesn't blow all his money, I mean, he's set for a long time. He made He's made so much money this last year just off of the Google AdSense. And uh, anyway, his story is just absolutely remarkable. But it's just, and he's just out there. He just knocks on people's doors and it's like, hey, can I mow your grass for free? And it's always like this crazy overgrown lawn. And he'll just do it for free. Anyways, his name's Al Blades. This is a really, really cool story. But if if you're not like open to be on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram and, you know, be fast. So yeah, it's a wild world. And I give so much credit to you guys who are able to be putting out content every single day of the week, you know, I, I just, I know how much work goes into all of that. So kudos to you that you can stay on top of all that because that's a lot of work. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I could talk social media and marketing all, all day, but I know, <laughs> you, you know, you want to talk a little bit more probably about the Ferrish brand and specifically maybe offer some insights into those listening right now about purchasing equipment and the supply chain issues and things of that nature. So we could uh, touch on that topic if you want, because I, I could talk to you till tomorrow about marketing and social media. I, I'm a nerd and I study algorithms all day. So yeah, well, talk about stuff that keeps people up at night, right? Like imagine trying to buy equipment in this space. I couldn't imagine. I know just we all know supply chain issues and everything that's out there kind of frustrating for everybody right now. Just across industries, I just waited eight months for a couch and uh, probably six months for a dishwasher. So, but I'm not making a living sitting on a couch. I wish I was. But when I think about what keeps, you know, our guys up at night, guys who use Ferris equipment, there's just a lot of things that are out there that are affecting our entire industry. And so I just want to make sure that I'm kind of giving some, some useful tips, tools, things to think about, especially when you're looking at your fleet and whether or not you make decisions to maintain them or trade them in. Yeah, I know at Ferris, uh, we do pride ourselves on making sure that that we know that guys are out there making a living with our with our equipment. So you will hear very often in our offices, you know, that they will get a phone call from a dealer that, you know, that dealer can't get a specific part. And one of our team members will literally walk out on the line and grab that part. We know how important it is to to stay up and running, but the world that we're in right now, it, it's just crazy with, with a lot of the delays in the supply chain. And there's so many things that keep coming down funnel that affect our ability to be able to get equipment out from labor to getting containers to get to get parts to us or different components, just all of the different things that affect the supply chain. And then even within like our individual industry, something as simple as a gasket or a seat, right? Like we can build 90% of a piece of equipment, but then if we're missing one piece, we can't ship it out. So that's been really hard for us to just know that we can't ship equipment. Demand is out there. And we hear so often that if we could just get equipment out to a dealer, it's sold before it's even there. And it's interesting in a lot of the forums that I'm on and different social media platforms, like, you know, guys are trying to help each other out. Like, oh, I'm looking for a Z3 61 inch. And hey, I saw this one at this dealer in this state. Wow. We're trying to create this network of people that are trying to get you the equipment that you need. And, you know, for being on my side of the business, it's just killing me that you wish that you could get, you know, this equipment out there faster. So it's interesting. My job has actually shifted not only from a, an equipment marketer, but I'm also doing marketing just to try to get people to come and work in our factories. So that's been a new adventure for me is just, you know, we've in increased wages and bonuses and, you know, we're committing if you're a skilled laborer, we will beat any offer that you can bring in because we just need people. The world's been wild with, you know, great resignations and people making different choices and trying to get people to come in and help us build equipment. has been really tough. So. Yeah. I, earlier in the day, I had an interview with ADP, the payroll company, and they said they've never seen anything like it. The, the talent right now, it's just crazy to even get somebody 
to work for you. It's, it's challenging. And then, yeah. you, you know, if you need a mower to make money and you can't get the mower, it's like, yeah. or if something breaks on the mower. And like you said, six to eight months on a couch or a refrigerator or a, a dishwasher, it, it can put you out of business. So it, it it's absolutely wild. can. Yeah. I, I think I read a statistic last week that we need the world like U S economics needs about 1.3 million workers just to get us back to where we were pre COVID. So that's, that's a lot of people who've made other choices. And I don't know if that means that they've shifted work industries, you know, and, and done different things or, or what they're doing out there, but that's a lot of jobs that need to get filled. Yeah. I'm, I'm not an economist CJ. Cause I don't understand. I'm like, no one's working. Like where, where, where's everyone getting all their money from? Like I, I can't, Thank God I'm not an economist because I, I don't understand how this all works. It's, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, it doesn't at all. It's super weird. And and I think the other thing we're going to see too is, you know, I think, and I don't want to speak out of turn because I'm not a landscaper, but I think most guys try to get about three years out of their fleet. And I think that we're going to see that to push to three, four, five years right now or you know, just the huge jump that I've seen in the secondary markets for you. I think that there's a lot of different dynamics going on in that space too. From a servicing standpoint, you have to be on top of all of your maintenance and all of your service to make sure that you're getting a longer life out of that equipment when typically you would trade that in and upgrade just to make sure that you've got, you know, premium equipment on your trailers. So curious to see how that age of life increases in the field and and what we learn from that as well. Yeah, totally. So you mentioned earlier that Ferris is in uh, regions and in certain parts of the country. Can can you elaborate on like exactly what states and, and what places that you guys are in? Yeah, so Ferris is originally from um, Munsville, New York, which is central New York. So we have a very strong foothold in the Northeast, very well-known brand in that area. And then we kind of do this kind of like U-shape across central U.S. and the Midwest, pretty strong in those areas. Also in, in Texas, we do a really good job. Florida is very well known, but I think trying to, to get word out to, to other people in between there, right? So in your area, you know, trying to, to grow our business in Kentucky and Tennessee and those types of areas and really focused on trying to get word out there that, you know, Ferris is a very niche brand, small, well-known brand where it is popular. But then when you get out of those spaces, it's the amount of people who are like, I've never heard of that, you know, Ferris Bueller who, and, you know, a lot of jokes about that and Ferris University and things, but we're trying to grow. So we're actually, one of the things that we tested this summer is a a NASCAR sponsorship. Um, We're sponsoring the number 42 car, Ty Dillon, which again, tying that into our origins and suspension with NASCAR with Todd Gordon, um, I think it's been a really good fit for us. So hopefully in the next upcoming races that the whole car is wrapped in Ferris, that more people start wondering, you know, who is this Ferris brand and and how do I learn more about that? So definitely trying to do more in that space and just try to get more national brand awareness out really, um, which would be really important for us. Yeah. I think my friend Tony's lawn care, I think he has a Ferris. He's down in Lake Oconee, Georgia. Okay. And you guys will be at the Quip Expo in October in Louisville? We will. Yeah. So we're going to have a brand new booth this year. We're going to be really excited to unveil that. We're working on a brand new outdoor space and um, really trying to look at some different ways to get people to not only see Ferris as a brand today, but the future of Ferris. So what does the future of the trailer look like and and how are we going to affect that? So pretty excited for Equip Expo for sure. Um, but we are pretty deep in planning for that. So I really look forward to having everybody stop by the booth and say hey and check out everything that we have there. Totally. I know we, we've been getting so many new listeners, CJ, and people think I'm overhyping the, well, it used to be called the GIE Plus Expo. I, I slip up and say that all the time, but now it's the Equip Exposition. It really is like the event. If you're in the lawn care landscaping industry, not just from a product side, like y'all, you know, it's smart for y'all, really smart for y'all to be there because you got tens of thousands of potential customers. But if you own a lawn care landscaping business, you're around thousands of other people that get the same issues and, and, you know, predicaments and responsibilities that we have as small business owners. And so I encourage everybody to go, you get to be around like-minded people. And I always drive back to Atlanta from Louisville every single time I'm pumped up, I'm re-energized. What is your perspective? 
I call it a family reunion. I, I truly love Expo. I'm exhausted by the time Expo is done, but it's a family reunion for me. Um, when you start to every year you go and you get to see to see people that you've seen year over year and kind of just reconnect. And, and like you said, you get re-energized and excited for the next season because that really, to me, kicks off that next season and seeing what everybody's doing. I think the networking for you guys, especially, you know, just to sit down at a table at lunch with somebody you've never met and kick up conversations and you really do start to learn, hey, you're from this other part of the country, but how are you handling this? And, and how are you managing through this? And I think building those relationships and that networking is so awesome. But I really just, I love seeing everybody. I love when they come to the booth and that's how I've just, I've met so many of these people I would truly call friends that I connect with on a personal level now. It's just so great for me. I love that show and I love, you know, just even at night, like getting out with everybody downtown and kind of seeing everybody out in the wild and having fun. I think there's a certain energy that building up to expo and once you're there it's just it's such a fun event and i just love when you see these stories of you know even just people who don't have landscaping businesses like a dad who brought his 12 year old son who wants to start his own landscaping business when he's 16 and you know you just get like oh my god i'm like in the cabinet like giving him every hat and sticker and shirt like oh my god this is so great when you just see like people who come as like family trips even if they're not in the industry it's so great yeah, and there's so many youth there, you know, those age, but even the 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds, even if you don't do lawn care landscaping the rest of your life, like if you're 18 years old and you run a lawn care business, you learn how to read a profit and loss statement, you learn how to communicate with customers, you learn how to sell, you learn how to do marketing, you learn how to do customer service. Like it's so healthy, in my opinion, for all these young kids, what, you know, and some of them might go on to do real estate or something else, but like you learn the business basics by having lawn care as a, as a teenager. So I, I absolutely love it. And then some of them will go on to scale their business. Uh, uh, there's a kid named Eric Hill. He's 21 years old. And I believe his net worth is already is a millionaire status just through building a lawn care business since, you know, before he could drive and, and, you know, saving his money and being financially, you know, smart and, growing his business and now the guy's net worth is a million bucks and it's just a, it's really cool so I, I love this industry and there's there's nobody that isn't willing to help somebody else or offer advice or you know give different tips or tricks on and any part of the business and i think that's what truly makes you know all these and like different touch points and engagements that i have with people from this industry like that makes it feel more of like a family which is why i kind of call it the family reunion you start to to see people and there's like some some influencers out there that i see trying to start their business and i kind of watch them and i keep an eye on them and then i a really good example is lamont at hairston property management i don't know if you're familiar with him but not hairston Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been yeah. following him for a while and I saw him at Expo and I ran up to him and I was like, Lamont, I'm CJ. And he's like, okay, crazy lady, you know, like, who's this lady? But, you know, that's, for me, that's what Expo is so great about is you start to to learn about people and you follow them and, and you kind of have your eye on them and watch them grow. That's what I love about Lamont. He's so dedicated to try to grow his business. And I just, I love it. It's fun. Yeah. And I got to be careful how I say this because Lowe's is our biggest sponsor, but Lamont was working at Lowe's and he, he recently, well, again, we love Lowe's. Lowe's is our biggest sponsor, but he (laughs) he resigned from his job there and he went full time in lawn care and and he's, you know, he's running his business, Hairston Property Management, I believe, full time now after after for years, you know, having it as a side hustle as working a a job and, and doing back and forth. And now he's full time in the industry. Uh, it's a really cool story. Yeah, I just I love to watch those, you know, and, and I love his candidness about being an entrepreneur and just starting and trying to grow his business. And it's been fun, really fun to watch. So I just I love what we do and, and the people that we work with on a daily basis. It's great. Cool. Well, it's really good to connect with you and, and kind of hear a little bit more of the origin story and the backstory of, of Ferris Mowers. Uh, is there anything we're leaving out that, that you'd like to share with those listening about Ferris and, and how they can maybe get on one or yeah, consider? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, so at ferrismowers.com, we do have a form you can fill out to demo equipment. And like I said, we have some key areas that we've got guys that'll come out to you, let you take a piece of equipment, check it out, mow some, some of your properties with that and get familiar with the brand. Even if we don't have a guy in that area, we, we've got you know, dealers everywhere. So, you know, finding a local dealer by you and connecting with them. I will say I love our dealers just as much as I do a lot of our contractor partners. They're so committed to the brand and making sure that they're committed to to you guys on your day-to-day -day business um, to make sure that you're up and running and, you know, providing for your families. So, um, definitely hope that you get to check that out and, and see what a unit with true suspension feels like. Four-point suspension, we've got units with suspension seats in addition to the four-point suspension. And I think once you get on a piece of equipment, you definitely won't want to ride anything else. Um, it's, a, it's a different experience. So I know I get out on, on all different types of equipment and every time I get on a Ferris, it's like, okay, if I had a business, this is for sure where I would want to be all day. So check that out. Um, we also have Turf Care line, um, which I think a lot of people don't know either. Um, we have a full line of spreaders and sprayers and stand-on blowers. We just launched our F1, uh, FB1000 blower that actually has a hands-free directional control that we've patented. Again, lets you go faster because you can keep your hand on the controls and control the direction with your foot for that blower. So. Uh, a lot of unique things that the Ferris brand has to offer, um, but with all of it, we're super committed to getting out in the field and understanding what you guys need day in and day out to make sure that, that you're doing a great job and making as much money as possible. Cool. Well, I appreciate you sharing the Ferris story. CJ, and it's nice to virtually meet you. And then uh, hopefully at the Equip Expo this year, you know, I'll, I'll see you around or, or stop by the Ferris. Yeah, place stop by the Ferris year. Whatever. It's going to be on and popping this year, man. I, I'm hearing, <laughs> you know, lots of registration and, and things of that nature. So it's going to be a really fun show, but you know, we can meet each other in person. So yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for having me and, and hopefully you have me back. This has been great. All righty. Well, thank you for your time. And what's the best way for people to connect with Ferris again? So ferrismowers.com. And then we also have obviously Instagram is Ferris Mowers. So you can check that out follow us along there and, and tag us if you have us. And we love to reshare and show what everybody's out there doing. Cool. Well, thanks for being on the show. All right. Thanks, Paul.